I haven't answered any questions for atheists lately, and I stumbled across this article that purports to ask atheists seven questions. And that would be all well and good if they actually had seven questions, but the article actually only asked six. What is it with the religious and their inability to count? This is the second list of questions I've answered that just hasn't added up. Kind of reminds me of Monty Python, but they're serious. So anyhow, let me answer these seven questions, six questions for atheists. Question one, why did you become an atheist? Well, I don't know that there's a bigger purpose in being an atheist. I was hoping he would explain exactly what he was looking for, but he never does, instead trying to say that he doesn't hate atheists and his imaginary friend loves us. There's this implied threat in there that atheists may have a good reason for not believing in a god, but god's going to get us anyhow. But since I have no guidance from our theist, I'll just give the standard answer that I have no evidence that your god or any gods are actually real, hence I don't believe in any of them. Therefore, I'm an atheist. Question 2. Where did matter come from? This is yet another attempt from the religious to force an imaginary god into the picture by creating an exception to their set of hard and fast rules. It's where things like the cosmological argument come from, and I've already debunked that. Matter came into existence with the Big Bang. What happened before the Big Bang? We don't know. That doesn't grant you a license to just make something up because it makes you feel good. Question 3. Not all atheists are hostile toward Christianity. Are you? And if so, why? Why, yes. Yes, I am. And not just to Christianity, but to all religions. Now, hostile doesn't mean violent, but I think you people are all idiots. And I think that you're idiots because I think that the very existence of irrational beliefs in the world causes harm to the rest of us. Because your beliefs inform your actions, the more idiotic your beliefs, the worse your ideas will be. It affects how you think, it affects how you vote, it affects how you treat other people, and how you raise your children. This isn't just limited to religion, but I think religion is the biggest example of stupid thinking we currently have. And so long as you can affect other people with your actions, your beliefs become important to everyone. And it doesn't really matter how liberal or mild your religious beliefs are. The argument that you're not as bad as the fundamentalist fanatics holds no water with me at all. Being bad at all means you're not being good. It's like saying, well, I only kill small animals, but not people. That doesn't make it okay. I don't care if you're not completely delusional. You're still delusional. And yes, I know that delusion isn't just a religious problem, but you're only asking about religion, so that's the answer you get. Number four, have you asked yourself, what if you're wrong and there is a heaven and hell? Well, that's an interesting question, but it's just Pascal's wager restated. One thing I always bring up is that the theist can be wrong as well. There are thousands upon thousands of gods that man has invented for himself to bow down to, not to mention a near infinite number of potential gods that man has never gotten around to making up. Given that, the chances that they picked the correct god, if any of them are correct, from their thousands and thousands of potential gods is ridiculously tiny. But theists never ask themselves what if they're wrong and they picked the wrong horse in this race? What if I'm wrong? What if you are? But they can't ask themselves that, or if they do, the only options they allow themselves to consider is their god, or no gods at all. There's no other possibilities they're willing to consider. That way, and this goes back to Pascal's wager again, they either get all the good parts, or they avoid all the bad parts. It's a no-lose scenario. They either go to heaven and party with god, or they die and that's it. Of course, once you introduce other gods, the story doesn't necessarily have such a happy ending. What happens if a god exists that isn't at all happy with you rooting for somebody else? You're willing to spend an eternity in some other pantheon's hell because you made a mistake? And the odds that you're making a mistake are huge. You've got a one in a million chance at best. I don't think I'd be celebrating just yet. But that's something they just won't talk about, even if you point it out to them. The whole of Pascal's wager is predicated on this kind of binary thinking. Maximum benefit or no loss. Once it becomes dangerous to pick any theological position without evidence, the whole argument flies out the window and into the dumpster of stupid ideas. But hey, let's just make up possible scenarios. Maybe, just maybe, there's a god out there that's going to torture anyone who worshipped the enemy forever. But for those who didn't, for those who actually followed the evidence and thought for themselves and didn't reduce themselves to quivering stupidity, bowing down to imaginary friends, maybe we get rewarded for using our brains. 
You never know, but it's just as likely as any other scenario, right? This is just a stupid question. Number 5. What happens after you die, and what proof of your belief do you have? You die, you get put in the ground, and that's it. What's my proof? That's all the evidence we have. What's your proof that anything else happens? Wishful thinking? Some book of Bronze Age mythology? Color me not impressed. Until we have any credible, objective evidence that something happens beyond what we can see with our own eyes, why would I ever believe that it's so? Why would you? It makes no sense. Number 6. Do you believe in objective truth? Well, you'd have to define truth. I believe in objective facts. Those are facts that are demonstrably true, and what you believe has no bearing on whether or not they are true. Morals are not objective, and that goes for all morals. There have been cultures out there where the murder of an innocent has not been seen as wrong. I mean, heck, look at the Aztecs and the Mayans who lined people up so they could rip their still-beating hearts out of their chests, and it wasn't considered murder in their societies at all. There isn't a single moral precept anywhere that can be shown to have been accepted at all cultures, at all times, and in all places. It just doesn't happen because that's not how morals actually work. Morals are made up by people collectively. They primarily exist on a societal level, although I suppose you can make the case that any group of people, regardless of size, can have some moral norms that apply specifically to that group. Morals change over time as society changes. It wasn't that long ago that people generally hated homosexuals in the West. Today, they get equal rights, and anyone who hates them is seen as a bigot. And yes, I'm talking to you religious assholes. There was a time when women and minorities were seen as inferior. Today, that isn't true, although you do see certain people who still push that myth because they want more power and control and money. And yeah, you religious assholes, you figure into that one too. That's why the religious try to push the idea that morality comes from some imaginary man in the sky. It's a means of achieving control, particularly when you cannot justify your claims any other way and convince anyone else without meaningless threats. Again, as I said earlier, this is where religious beliefs cause people to think stupid things, and it's yet another reason why I oppose religion. Honestly, while I have no problem answering all the questions theists care to throw at me, I find that a lot of these questions are phrased not to find out information, but as a form of gotcha, where they're trying to force you to change your view, not to find out what your view actually is. They don't really care what you think. They have no interest in your answers. They just want to change your mind. I find this to be terribly dishonest. Now, if you go over to the website in the description, you find that, like so many of these other web-based questionnaires, there's a question, and then there's a passage that tries to explain why atheists answer the way they do, and why they're wrong. And that's not honest inquiry. That's apologetics aimed at the religious, not at the non-religious. They don't actually care if atheists answer the questions, because the whole article is aimed at believers, as a means of reassuring them that their beliefs are correct, no matter what the evil atheists have to say. But atheists do show up, and if the comments are left open, they're going to give them answers that they simply do not appreciate, including calling the whole article out for being patronizing and obnoxious. But the people who wrote the article, and many like it, they don't care if they're being patronizing and obnoxious, and the religious people aren't bright enough to see it for what it is. Well, we do, and we point it out, and the clueless theists whine about it when we do. Funny the amount of self-imposed ignorance that comes from the religious side, isn't it? 